Don't get us out of frame. We're gonna get us out of frame. Uh, Why don't you stop man spreading? Put I'm, your legs this is together. My hips. Look are... at look at how my legs are. You have a. <laughs> Put your legs together, Greg. You're really there. We go. This is really <laughs> uncomfortable. I, I, it, this is taking muscles to hold my legs in place. Okay, well, good night. Don't feel squished. So you're good. learning. <laughs> Welcome back to The Present Perspective. Recently we went to El Paso. I'm sure a lot of you were probably wondering why, first of all, why on earth are we going to El Paso of all places? But second of all, we just got to Mexico. Yeah, why, why go to the US? Why go to the US immediately after moving down to Mexico? The reason is, we didn't mention this before because we were really nervous about actually getting it, but we came here without a student visa. So there was a lot of issues in the US so because of that, we can never visa. So we had to enter the country as tourists, move everything in, and then very anxiously try to get um, a visa appointment somewhere along the U.S.-Mexican border. And um, the reason we say anxiously for that is because it was a big ordeal to get up to Texas and to finally get across the border and get this stuff knocked out. So if something would have gone wrong in that whole process, it would have all been for nothing. Another thing, too, is like the actual visa costs like $40 each. But because of all of this, we had to then book a flight to El Paso. Well, actually we booked it to Juarez, but book a flight, book all the nights of stay, travel to the airport in our car, pay for parking at the airport. It ended up being several hundred dollars for something that should have been $40. Something else that goes along with the story is that we bought a car. Go to Walmart. Well, what are we gonna do at Walmart? Pick up a car. Pick up a car? Yeah. Who's car? Our car. Our car? Yeah. What? The car we paid for and bought. What? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. The car was pretty cheap. I mean, it's not a great car either. It's a Mini Cooper. How old is it? 2003. 2003. So it's a pretty old car. Good experience buying it. I have to say, I don't think I mentioned this to you. People that we bought it from, it was his son, who's around our age, and maybe mid twenties, late twenties. Yeah. And his dad came. His professor. His dad was super nice. Um. He knew we were married. This is the, the way the conversation went. He goes, "Oh, like, how do you guys know each other?" And we're like, "Oh, we're married." He goes, "Oh, wow." Goes on his phone, finds a picture of his young daughter, and shows Greg. Yeah. <laughs> Did you notice that? Yeah, how was inappropriate like, that was. And I was like, "Ew." He's like, oh, let me show you, let me show you my, my daughter. And he, and he showed Greg, not me, yeah. just multiple pictures of his daughter. And I'm like, I'm right yeah. here. You just asked how we know each other. We're freaking married. But was... besides that, it was great. So we bought our car. Going to Borders was our first trip in this car. The one thing that we didn't want to happen was to get pulled over by the police. Because you only hear bad stories about it. People here who we've talked to, have been like, oh yeah, it's really bad. There's a lot of corruption in the police. So we're just like, we're gonna try to avoid it at all costs. We're gonna do everything legally. And we got stopped. So on our drive to Mexico City, which is where we flew out of to get up to Juarez, you know, we're looking at the map and we're super excited because we're only 10 minutes from the airport. Nothing's gone wrong. Uh, you know, it, it's our first trip. The car held together. We're pretty close to the airport. And all of a sudden this police officer on a motorcycle comes zipping up behind us. And he pulls up to the side of the window and he tells us to pull over and follow him off the uh, side of the highway. So we did. Uh, we get moving down and he tells us that there's rules about what cars can drive when. The state of Mexico, there's like, Mexico is a country and there's also Mexico state. Um, so between the hours of 5 a.m. and 11 a.m., no vehicles from out of state are allowed to be driving through. We had no idea yeah. whatsoever. We broke the law, and the appropriate thing to do is then to give us a ticket that we pay to the city. This police officer, who was really nice and trying to save us time, uh, decided that it would probably just be a lot easier for us if we just paid him twice the amount of the ticket on the spot, uh, rather than going to the police station. He told us, which this is a lie, he told us that it would cost us four million pesos if he were to write us up an official ticket. He was lying clearly, so he's like, oh, just pay me 5,000 pesos. We're like, we don't just carry 5,000 pesos around us, so we were trying to get away with just giving him... 800 pesos on us, which is like 30 bucks, you know? So that's decent money. Uh, and, and he says, no, 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 I need this, I need this, I need this. He goes, so follow me and I'll take you to an ATM and you can withdraw the money there. So we had to follow him 
the first ATM was, wasn't working. And so we drove to a different ATM, withdrew the cash, gave him it. He wrote us on a little white piece of paper. He just scribbled something down. It was a fake it. name and a reason for the pullover. A reason for the pullover. And it was on the back of some like McDonald's receipt. And so we're like, okay, this clearly, clearly isn't official, but- This must be the way they do it This must be how they do it when they bribe people. Not bribe, I guess bribe. Rob from people. Yeah. Um, and so I, I kid you not, we're 10 minutes away from the airport at this point. Five minutes from driving away from this police officer, I was like almost crying in the car while Greg was getting the money. You were we, crying. Well, <laughs> Wait, that's the that second point. time. <laughs> so we get pulled over five minutes later by two different police officers who go through the same thing. Like, oh, you can't be driving right now. And we go, yes, we know. We literally just got pulled over. This is our ticket. And they go, oh no, this isn't official. Yeah, that's you not valid. To, You're going to have to pay valid. again. You're going to have to pay again. And they wanted that same fine. That he, that the first five thousand dollars, five thousand pesos. But I was like, I, I literally can't even withdraw that much money from the ATM in one day. So I'm like crying at this point. I'm like, these people are ripping us off. They know that the other police officer just ripped us off. They want more money. Um, so he's like, oh no, this isn't official. This isn't official. Finally, after I was crying, Greg was like, we can't pay. We like, yeah, you know. Uh, we ended up giving them the rest that we had. What was the rest? Including a twenty dollar bill. A twenty U.S. dollar that's, bill. That's clearly he ended not up seeing it while Greg was pulling yeah. out the other pesos. He saw the U.S. dollar, and he goes, "Oh, well, what about that?" Greg's like, well, "You want this too?" And he was like, "Yeah, I'll take it." So they take it. Clearly, pocket all the money. They give us, <laughs> they give us a ticket. It was a, a an official piece of paper. Basically, a off. sticky note that said. Mexico City on the bottom. And, and, and it off goes, and did not write a thing. You don't want to write anything on it? And he goes, no, 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 this is good enough. And he takes our white sheet of paper, the first ticket, and the second ticket, and puts them together and puts it on our, our windshield. As if that's going to be any better. It was an awful experience. And the thing is, is that like, this happens all the time, but it also happens to people who weren't even breaking the law. Our landlord was like, no, they'll make up reasons to pull you over and make you pay. So. Yeah, yeah the corruption is so widespread. <sighs> Kind of a bad start to this trip. We didn't even get on the airplane without having to almost pay 300 US dollars. So at that point, we were already negative $300 for the trip, but happier things. Happier things. We, we landed in Juarez safely mm -hmm. in one piece. For those of you who don't know, just a little bit of historical context, Juarez used to be a booming uh, metropolis here in Mexico. It was one of the places to go uh, it was super fun. It was known for its nightclubs and its, its nightlife and its food and it's supposedly the birthplace of the margarita, fun fact. Given turf wars by the cartels back in the mid-2000s, it became one of the most dangerous cities on earth uh, and it had like a top five homicide rate for four years in a row uh, globally, so like pretty bad. They've really done a great job of fixing it. And now, like, if you're just like a tourist going to Juarez, so if you're in El Paso and you just want to cross the border and see what Juarez is like, there's really no danger there. The only way that you would end up getting hurt is if you happen to be in a crossfire of gang on gang violence. That or if you get your nose dirty. Like, you do drugs. Oh. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> Don't uh, do drugs in Juarez, guys. The, 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 way, the way our Uber driver put it to me is he was like, bad people, bad things happen to bad people. Yeah. Um, and he said in Juarez, if you don't interact with bad people, bad things probably aren't going to happen to you. We cross the border and like our goal is to get a margarita because it's birthplace margaritas, folklore says. Um, we weren't serving any alcohol, so we did not get the margaritas. That's on our list to do next time we go back to Juarez. It was really cool walking around. Yeah, there were a lot of people in the streets. It was, it was lively bumping. and there was music playing. It was a really cool experience. I, yeah. I liked it. No, it was a really good time. I mean, I felt safe. Juarez, thumbs up. We have to go back to get a margarita someday. El Paso. El Paso was cool. It was really hot. I actually had a lot of issues with it being really hot and like, cause we did a lot of walking around the city too. If you go to El Paso, the big thing to do is to go to different like cool restaurants. But we got to go to this place, it was like a cereal, it's called cereal killers. <laughs> <laughs> and like what they do is they like take cereal, you can get it as a cereal bowl, or you can get like, it's like a marshmallow treat with different cereals inside. So it's just a really creative, cool dessert place that we got to go to. There's oh, a great yes. No, 
Yeah. Frontera? Yeah, Frontera. Frontera. So they were like these churros. So imagine Peace, Love and Little Donuts. You know how like the little donuts and like all these different flavors and styles. They did the same thing except the churros, which I thought was really ingenious. And it was delicious. Here's what we have. We have Nutella and strawberry, s'mores, coconut, bacon, s'mores. Yeah, I knew that was the one you were gonna pick. Bacon. This is so good. I don't know why nobody's done this before. They were really, really good. Yeah. So I highly recommend Frontera, Serial Killers, so those places that we really liked. What we would have done had one COVID weren't happening, but two if we had our own car is to go to a place called Cattleman's. So Cattleman's is a ranch that sits like 35, 40 minutes east of El Paso, and everything they serve is like grown, produced, whatever on the ranch. So like the steaks are slaughtered and hand cut that day. The vegetables farmed there are right next door. And one of our Uber drivers was even telling us you can call ahead with like the exact cut of something that you want and they'll have it. He said if you want a four pound steak, you call ahead and they'll, they will have a four pound steak for you. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. 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 So that pretty would be something stuff. to do for next time. De definitely check it out if you go and let us know how it is. Yeah. Um, what else do we have on tap for today? Oh, Crystal Ray. Mm. Where do we go? Okay, so one of our Uber drivers. So Cristo Rey is like this, just this huge Jesus statue. On this hill, you can see it from El Paso. This Jesus with his arms stretched out. Once again, it was closed, so we couldn't visit. But our Uber driver was telling us that his family is from Juarez. And his grandma, multiple times a year, would walk from Juarez all the way through El Paso, up this mountain, to go pray. And this mountain's not even in Texas. It's in New Mexico. Yeah, it's in New Mexico. <laughs> so she literally like crosses like two different borders and she would get it done in a day. That's something that I would like to do if we go back. I like to go to Let's know. talk about the hostel. The hostel was pretty cool. Oh, the hostel was. Cool. Yeah. So the hostel was actually one of the oldest buildings in El Paso. I think it goes back some, somewhere in the 1800s. Um, it was pretty cool. I mean, it was... It was Greg's first hostel experience. Yeah, and it wasn't really much of a hostel experience. It was pretty much a hotel. Right? So this is Greg's first hostel experience. It's a little bit, I mean, unfair because this is a great hostel. Yeah, we're going to the hotel. Ooh. The Gardner Hotel. The Gardner yeah. Hotel. Uh, right in downtown El Paso. I think we paid like 40 bucks a night after yeah. tax. Not bad. Uh, only downside was there was no air conditioning. It was steamy. We're going to show you some really cool shots. Yeah. Of the sunset. We went to a scenic drive and it was beautiful. You could see all of the rock mountains, sunrise and sunset. It was gorgeous. Our thoughts on one of the most dangerous cities in the North America. Recommendations? Go somewhere with AC. Drink a lot of water. Mm. Go when there isn't a pandemic. Yes, that's the big thing. Eat a lot of food. What's coming up next? Uh... Oh my gosh, wait. On our trip back, we were so worried about the police pulling us over again. We did not drive during the illegal hours. We drove during the proper hours. And nobody pulled us over. So we made it back crazy. in one piece. What's next for the present perspective? We're planning a, a drive to a local little town. Adlisco. Adlisco. Oh, and if you would like to see that beauty, stay tuned. Subscribe. Subscribe and say. See you. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.
Just this whole time I've been thinking, what if I didn't press play? Mm, that would be a bad so, thing. I would kill you. Let's see. We'd have to do all that over again.